So in this problem, we're going to get a little practice with working with relations, and we're going to work some a very concrete example where we actually write down very clearly what some of these sets and relations are. So we're going to work with the sets A, B, and C, where the sets A, B, and C are defined as follows. A is the set with elements 1, 2, 3. B is the set with elements 4, 5, 6. And C is the set with elements 7, 8, 9. And we're going to define some relations. One of the relations we're going to call R. And R is the set that consists of these four pairs, 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6, and 3, 6. So just by looking at this, we see that the first coordinate of each pair is always from set A. So there are 1, 1, 2, and 3. Those all come from set A. And the second coordinate of each pair always comes from set B. So this is a relation from A to B, since R is a subset of the Cartesian product of A and B. S is this relation. So again, looking at this, we can see that the first coordinate always comes from B, and the second coordinate always comes from the set C. So S is a relation from B to C, because S is a subset of the Cartesian product of B with C. And then finally, we'll define the relation T. T consists of one, two, three, four, five different elements. And again, looking at this, you can see that T is a relation from A to C, because the first coordinate of each element in T always comes from A, and the second coordinate from each element of T always comes from C. So T is a subset of A cross C, so T is a relation from A to C. So these are the sets and relations that we're going to work with in this problem, and now we're going to do a few simple computations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute S composed of R. So first let's write down what we mean by the composition. So S composed of R, this is itself a set, and it consists of a whole bunch of pairs of numbers. So every element of this set is parenthesis A comma C, close parenthesis. And each one of these coordinates is an element of A cross C. But it's only an element given that there exists a B in the set B, such that AB is in R and BC is in S. So that's a little, a little tough to understand. Um, Part of the set is not hard to understand. When you picture this, it's just a set of pairs of numbers. It's the existence part that is a little tricky to figure out, but as we work through this concrete example, you'll see how this definition actually works. So first, let's just copy down the relations that we're working with. We're working with the relation R and the relation S. So I just recopied those from the previous chart. Let's think about how we're going to compute this. So this relation, S composed of R, you can kind of thinking that kind of think of that as starting with R, and remember R was a relation from A to B, and S is a relation from B to C. So you can kind of think of S composed of R as going from A to B and then from B to C. But we can only make that transition between A to B and B to C if there exists a common point between A to B and B to C. So let's, let's start writing this out. So let's start with listing elements of R, because that's kind of how we're going to start. We're going to start in A, go to B, and then go from B to C. So one of the elements of R is 1, 4. So we start with 1, we go to 4. So the question is, is there an element in S that begins with a 4? And there is. One of the elements of S is 4, 7. So I can write that down, and I see that these match. So that's what we mean by the existence part, the part of the definition of S composed of R, the second part, such that there exists a B and B with A comma B and R and B comma C and S. You see how those interior coordinates match. The, the second coordinate of A comma B and the first coordinate of B comma C, those have to match. So that's what we've done here. We've shown that these match. So since these match, then the outer coordinates, 1 comma 7, are a member of S composed of R. So 1, 7 is going to be an element of S composed of R. And then we can just keep going. We can list the element 1, 5 and ask ourselves, is there an element in S that starts with 5? And there is. There is the element 5, 8. So again, these interior points match. 5 and 5 matches. So the element 1, 8 will be an element of S composed of R. We keep going. 2, 6. 2, 6 is an element of R. We ask ourselves, is there an element in S that starts with a 6? Yes, there is. That's the element 6, 9. So the element 2, 9 is an element of S composed of R. And then finally, 3, 6. Is there an element in S that starts with a 6? Yes, there is. It's the element 6, 9 again. 
So 3, 9 will be an element of S composed of R. So this is kind of the simple way to come up with the set S composed of R. And we can go ahead and write down the final answer now. S composed of R is just another set, and it consists of all of these pairs, which are all elements of the Cartesian product A cross C. You might ask yourself what had happened, what would have happened if maybe, for instance, S did not consist of the point 5, 8. Well, on this second line here, right here, we would not have been able to find an S that started with a 5, so then 1, 8 would not have been a member of S composed of R. So if we had not been able to find a B in B, such that A, B was an R and B, C was an S, then we would not have had an element. It just so happened that in this example we did for each of these, but if we had not been able to find this, then this would not have been an element. Okay, I'm going to back that out. Let's go ahead and do another example. So part two, let's work with relations R and T inverse. So again, I'm just going to write down what R is, and I'm going to write down what T is just from the first slide. And we are going to compute R composed of T inverse. So one of the first things we need to know is what is T inverse? So T inverse, by definition, is just the set T with all the coordinates flip-flopped, kind of. So we take every element in T, and T inverse is just that set with all the coordinates reversed. So if AC is in T, CA is in T inverse. So it's really easy to write down what T inverse is. We just look at the first element, which is 1, 7, and we write down 7, 1. And 1, 8 gets turned into 8, 1, and 2, 7 gets turned into 7, 2. 3, 8 gets turned into 8, 3. 3, 9 gets turned into 9, 3. So this is the relation T inverse. Okay, Just like before, we're going to kind of list T inverse R and then elements of T inverse composed of R. So let's just do this element by element. So we're going to start with an element of T inverse. The first one is 7, 1. And again, we ask ourselves, is there an element in R that starts with a 1? And there is, and in fact, there's actually two. There's the 1, 4 element and the 1, 5 element. So since there exists a B such that these interior coordinates match up, we know that 7, 4 will be an element and 7, 5 will be an element of T inverse composed of R. And we can continue this. We go to the next element of T inverse, 8, 1. We ask ourselves, is there an element in R that starts with a 1? And there is. There's actually two of them, 1, 4 and 1, 5. So the elements 8, 4 and 8, 5 will be in the set. 7, 2. There's an element in R that starts with a 2. It's the element 2, 6. So the element... I'm sorry, that should actually be 7, 6. So 7, 6 is an element of T inverse composed of R. And we just keep going. 8, 3. Is there an element in R that starts with a 3? Yes, there is. It's the element 3, 6. The interior 3s match, so the exterior coordinates 8 and 6 become the element of T inverse composed of R. And then the last one, finally, 9, 3. Is there an element in R that starts with a 3? Yes, there is. It's the element 3, 6. So 9, 6 is an element of T inverse composed of R. So we can go ahead and just list out this final set. It consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements. And this is a relation now, and it consists of just all these pairs or coordinates. So that is some kind of concrete examples. Those are some concrete examples of how to work with relations and sets and actually compute some of these compositions of relations.